All right, let's see if I can figure out the source of the intermittent picture failure issue. If you haven't seen the last installment of this restoration series, I suggest you go back and watch it, especially towards the end. What happened was I got the chassis all restored, put it back in the cabinet, and let it play for a while, and everything seemed fine until the picture collapsed horizontally, so just a vertical line in the picture tube, and then that faded out altogether a short while later. But the sound kept going just fine. I turned the set off, pulled the chassis out a little bit, wiggled the connections to go up to the picture tube, put it back in, set ran fine again, but this time only for a few seconds, then the picture collapsed again. Well, after that video, I did that a few more times, and most recently I had it running for about 20 minutes. So I really don't think it's a heat issue. Sometimes it runs for 5 seconds, sometimes 20 minutes. I really think it is a bad connection somewhere. So what could it be? Well, here's the horizontal oscillator and output tube. And here's, um, uh, I should say that's the horizontal oscillator tube, and here's the uh, horizontal output tube. So both of these are likely culprits if it's a loose tube connection, or the components around there if it's something bad on the circuit board. Also could be a problem with the flyback, or an issue with the yoke connection. And here's one of the sockets here. There's two plugs here and here. This one is broken off. That's how it arrived to me. There's a chip in the Bakelite material. See, there's a chunk broken off here. And whatever was supposed to mount this down, this is gone. I, th I think, well, I'm not sure. Sometimes they use like a, a snap ring on the underside, but I, really, I think this might have just been a friction fit. I'll, I'll compare it to my other holiday chassis and see. But both of those seem like a culprit. Now what I'm not sure about is if the horizontal yoke became disconnected, would that kill the high voltage? Or are they independent? Sure, they both come off the flyback, but do they both have to be fully functioning? So, here's the schematic. So here we go up and around and over to the socket and that goes to the yoke, but to the high voltage. It's a separate winding here. So it seems more likely to me that something over here is failing. So sure, these sets are notorious for having broken sockets. I replaced the sockets and these look fine. Might be dirty. I don't know. They look pretty clean to me. Well, I didn't replace this one though, but this isn't the one that's likely to fail. Uh, I can try cleaning the, the, the pins on the tubes, but these are new tubes, new old stock tubes, and the, the pins and the contacts look awfully clean to me. Also, wiggling the tubes did nothing to solve the problem at all. So I don't think that's where it is. Um, now I should also point out that while restoring this, I powered it up numerous times on a workbench. Never had a problem. It wasn't until I put it into the cabinet. But before I put it back into the cabinet, I did do some changes underneath the uh, chassis, which I never tried on the workbench. So that seems to me a pretty likely source of a potential problem. So what was the very last thing I worked on? Well, I restuffed this electrolytic cap and wired it back in. I tacked in a larger resistor and filament dropper and I wired up the diodes on the top side for the power supply. Now we can't be losing power because the tuner keeps working and we, and we still have sound. But perhaps one section of this four section electrolytic would only affect the horizontal, so I'll have to check on that now. Occasionally in the past I've installed a component like a rebuilt cap and then threaded the wire through the lug, wrapped it around and forgot to solder it in place, but no. Nope. All of these seem to be soldered in there. 
pretty solidly. But uh, doesn't hurt to double check my wiring now. If it comes to it, what I would like to avoid doing, but I probably won't be able to, is pulling the CRT out of the cabinet. It was a pain to get this installed in the cabinet, that's why I don't want to take it out if I don't have to, but I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have no choice. So get it out, I gotta take this Phillips screw out and then lift it straight up. Actually getting it out isn't that bad. It's more putting it back in because when you put it back in you gotta thread these wires through the hole in the top of the cabinet. Not so tough if you have two people around, but when I'm just by myself, it's a little tricky to pick this top up, which is kinda heavy get the wires down through the hole and then settle it down. So what I did before is I I'll put like a rubber band around all the wires which, which helps a bit. Because without this you can't power it up on your workbench. Here's a closer look at those sockets. The smaller one is for the CRT and the larger one is for the yoke. I compared this to another holiday chassis I have and there is no retention ring or anything. This is just held in by the friction of the metal to the Bakelite. This one's chipped, so it just flops around. So perhaps some epoxy could take care of that. Now, while examining this, I noticed something. These wires don't look too good over here, now, do they? So I wonder if that might be an issue. Well, I don't think there's going to be any faster way to track the problem down there. Just get that CRT up here on the workbench. Fire this thing up, see if I can replicate the problem. Okay, here we go for a bench test. Finishes last, and again, the one two punch is what you need in the NBA. So we'll see what happens, but I think you're gonna make a little bit of 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 a See if we got any high voltage. Okay, here is the output of the horizontal multi vibrator. Pin 7 right there. 40 volts peak to peak should look like that. Bam, there we go. Frequency's off though. 16.84 should be 15.75. So it might not be getting a good sync pulse, but that doesn't concern me. What concerns me is it doesn't do any high voltage. So let's see if we got. Uh, signal on pin 5 there, should look like that, 170 volts peak to peak, kind of a sawtooth looking thing. I can't get a pin 5 easily, but I can get to that 560k resistor, which is right down here on the board. Nothing on that side of it, and nothing on the other side of it. Okay, that doesn't look good. So there is no signal getting to the grid of the horizontal output tube, it looks like. Just wiggling my K networks a little bit. Yeah, turn this off. Alright, because that signal comes through K6, so... It's like a wave shaping network, so... If we got a signal coming out of the horizontal multivibrator and not getting into the horizontal output, probably something wrong inside there. Alright, I think I found the problem. So there's the network that seems to be the issue. Put pressure on it a little bit. 
there we go. So, got to be a bad connection or trace down there. I can kind of hear it cracking a little bit as I bend it back and forth. So, I'll examine the board more closely, flip this chassis around and see uh, if I can spot anything, but probably I'm going to have to pull the, bo uh, the board out and double check that the solder connections. Well, at least I'm glad it didn't seem to be an issue with uh, the network itself, so my rebuilding efforts were okay. It's just uh, probably an issue with the circuit board. I wedged a little bit of foam against that network to keep the side running. It's been running over an hour and a half now without any problem, so I'm sure that's what the issue is. So I'm going to have to uh, pull the board out and check what's going on on the other side of it. And there it goes again. So um, it's got to be a cold solder joint or break in the circuit board or something on the, on the other side of that. So out the board will come. Alrighty, I've undone all the wires and unsoldered the stakes, which didn't take all that long. And I've already peaked, so I know what the problem is. And nothing to do with heat, nothing to do with bad sockets, nothing to do with broken circuit board traces. I forgot to solder one of the connections. So... Rebuilt K5 network, and there's the wire on the end. Didn't connect it, and that is the one that goes to that 560k resistor and the 470k at the junction there, which is what feeds the grid of the horizontal output tube. So by putting stress on this, deflected it enough that friction uh, would, you know, provide enough of a contact there. Pressure would, you know, force the bent over lead onto the foil and make good enough connection that the circuit would work. So, as I'm sure I've said before, when you got these boards out, check everything once, twice, three times. So I'll go over this board before I put it back in. There's one that looks potentially uh, bad too right there. But uh, I think... It's an original, that's going to the coil, so I think that's an original joint, but I'll uh, touch it up anyways. Alright, so, it all boiled down to, I screwed up. I forgot to solder that connection. I soldered the unsoldered connection, and touched up a few others, reinstalled the board, Made a bit easier because I just happened to have another one close by for reference. And I've hooked the CRT back up, so let's see if this thing works properly now.
ask it an awful lot. Well, I'm not asking you. The boys aren't asking you. You're the best eater yourself. Her name ain't even Annie. It's this Genevieve or something. Evanita, as a matter of fact. All right, now. I'm not going to put this back in the cabinet because remember, this is not mine. This is going to get shipped out. This is my chassis, which still needs some work, so I don't see any point in putting this back in the cabinet uh, just to do one final test. I, I think this is a up on the bench hooked up like this is a solid enough test. I'll leave this running for an hour or two to make sure there aren't any hiccups and then uh, call, notify the owner and ship it out. And once that's off the bench, I will get this up, which I think just needs an alignment. And I also want to do the same trick with the old original rectifier and clip those out and mount the new ones up here rather than kind of on that crude terminal strip I put in there. Now to aid me with that alignment, I've got some nifty new equipment. I am going to make a separate video and show you guys a little update on my workshop and some other stuff. So for now, I hope, I really, really hope, this is the final video on this Predict a Holiday Chassis Restoration.